Hey, I'm Nick Rollo, I'm a pop producer. Welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to go over how I think you should label and name your audio tracks. So this is specifically for if you're gonna send your stems to somebody who's gonna produce or mix it. In the case like, you know, if, if I was working with you, maybe you would record the vocals and the guitars and then you would export them and send them to me. How would I wanna receive those files? What kind of labeling systems would I like to see? Um, I think this could be helpful. This would be quick. I'm not actually going to show you on the screen. It's just sort of high level stuff. I can go like a, I can do a more specific in detail video down the line if you like. Uh, before we get into it, smash the like button, hit subscribe, and turn on the notification bell if you find this helpful. I'm angling to the left a little bit. Let's get into it. So I think the main thing with labeling and naming is that it's just easy to understand. I know some mix engineers and producers really want really specific naming conventions and that is fine, but that's kind of a one-to-one -one basis. That's like if you're working with Bob, this is how Bob likes it. That's a conversation for you and Bob to have, <laughs> whoever Bob is. I think in general though, what you should do is just make sure it's like clear. If we're looking at vocals, for example, I mean, you can do it in two ways, right? You can have lead vocal, maybe lead vocal one and two, or you could go, lead verse, lead chorus, lead bridge, and you'd have all your lead parts respectively in those in those naming conventions. That's pretty simple. Backing vocals often can be quite a mess. The way I like to do it is I'll have, say, chorus backing vocal one left, chorus backing vocal one right. So those are the same harmony, but it's just panned left and right, two different takes. Or you could go chorus backing vocal one, chorus backing vocal two, and that would just be the chorus backing vocals on the chorus tracks. And then you'd do the same thing for the verse, verse back, verse BV1, verse BV2, or verse BV1L, verse BV1 right, if that makes sense. Just make sure like it's simple to understand. If you look at it, you don't wanna be like, I don't know what these parts are. Sometimes I get stuff that has just backing vocals from the entire song just strewn out onto one channel. And like, I, I get why you do that, but it just, it's confusing. Sometimes it's it's just hard to actually categorize. I like to process in groups. Uh, it just, it's easier if it's all just labeled under the sections, in my opinion, that's how I would do it. Guitars and instruments in a similar manner. I would for guitar just say GTR, and then maybe it's verse one, verse left, verse right. Um, GTR melody, it doesn't really matter exactly what it is, but just make it clear. Like when I look at it, I wanna have an understanding of what's going on before I actually listen to it. And when I'm looking at things and I'm about to process them, I wanna know what I'm about to process without having to actually you know, look it up and find it. If you've got individual drum parts, make sure it's kick, snare, hi-hat, open hat, percussion one, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you get the idea. Just have, a system that you follow, make sure you're really, really strict with it because it'll make your life easier down the line if you have to look at the stems and say like, what is this? It'll make the lives of producers like myself easier, which is a massive win because I can just dive straight into the project. Um, yeah, just be consistent, keep a structure. I can do a more in-depth video where I actually show you my structure on the computer. Uh, let me know, comment below and have a good day. I'll catch you later.